We've seen the character of Miguel Diaz go through hell and back so far in the Cobra Kai series, from where we first met him back in Season 1 all the way up to Season 4. It hasn't been an easy journey. His story of turning to karate at first to defend himself and his friends closely mirrors the events of the first Karate Kid film, and has turned out the best for his character despite some bumps in the road that he's faced. But just because there happens to be similarities, does that mean that Miguel Diaz is this generation's Karate Kid? What is happening fellow Cobras, welcome back to Strike First Media. In this video I'm going to be taking a deep dive into the character of Miguel Diaz, where I'll be specifically dissecting his character traits, his character development in the current timeline up until Season 3, and his similarities to the original Karate Kid, Daniel LaRusso. But before we get started, if this is your first time with us and you love Cobra Kai and Karate Kid, consider joining our dojo today by hitting the red subscribe button below and turning on all notifications so you don't miss anything. So when we first meet the character of Miguel Diaz, we see him confront his neighbor Johnny Lawrence, introducing himself. Johnny rudely blows him off, leaving Miguel confused as Johnny headed for work. And later that same day, during the evening, we see Miguel and Johnny meet up again coincidentally at the local convenience store, where we see Johnny getting his dinner and Miguel getting some medicine for his sick grandmother. Then some high school jocks stroll in, looking to buy beer, and Miguel somehow foils their chances of getting it, leading to the jocks and their main bully of Kyler to become angry with Miguel and he takes quite the beating until Johnny steps in to save him by using karate he hasn't used in over 30 years. The next day, Miguel then asks Johnny to train him so he can learn to defend himself once school starts, but Johnny says no at first, but then later comes around to the idea, now that he has money to open his own dojo from his stepfather, Sid. As school starts, Miguel befriends two nerds named Eli and Dimitri. More time passes and Miguel continues to improve at the dojo, but when the Halloween dance rolls around and Miguel finds himself in a similar situation to the convenience store, but this time, the main difference is Johnny isn't there to save him, and leads to Miguel getting badly injured by Kyler and his friends. And Miguel's mother Carmen takes action and prevents Miguel to continue training because of this for a short period. But she eventually gives in because Johnny vows that he'll always be there for her son, and because Miguel's developed such a passion for karate. After training for a while, Aisha decides to join Cobra Kai, giving them another addition to their class size. And a big turning point in the season is when Miguel stands up for Kyler for bullying Samantha. But this time, Miguel takes care of Kyler and his friends with seemingly little effort thanks to his newfound skills and karate. The next day at the dojo, there's a mob of kids outside waiting to join Cobra Kai after seeing the fight with Miguel going viral. But as the days go by, Johnny loses more and more of his students by being hard on them. But Miguel reminds Johnny that he was once bullied and doesn't want Johnny to bully his friends that are turning to him for help. But also during this time, Miguel and Samantha begin to grow close to one another and go on their first date that ends in success after Miguel takes Johnny's advice about striking first and the committee meeting Johnny attends is successful after he takes Miguel's advice about being relaxed and calm as well as being nice to the committee members. After class within the next few days, Johnny learns that Miguel is dating a LaRusso and begins to tell him the stories about the problem he had with Samantha's father back in high school and he warns him to watch out for the LaRussos because Daniel stole his girl. This stays in the back of Miguel's mind and troubles him for quite a while as Daniel tells Sam to stay away from the people affiliated with Cobra Kai and this causes her to hide her relationship with Miguel from her family. That night, Miguel attempts to make a stand and introduce himself to Sam's dad, but then leaves in disappointment when he sees Robbie and Sam having dinner with their family, getting the wrong idea. Within the next week, Johnny confronts Daniel about the damages done to his car by his cousin Louie and informs them that his car wouldn't need to be fixed if Sam and her friends hadn't wrecked it beforehand. This causes Amanda to ground Sam of her phone, which further complicates the communication between Miguel and Sam. And the lack of response from Sam makes Miguel grow more paranoid because he's tried to contact her all day and still receives no response. And when Sam finally does make it to the party that Aisha threw, she shows up with Robbie and now with Miguel being drunk at this point, he gets the wrong idea and takes things into his own hands by trying to hit Robbie but misses and ends up hitting Sam. The next day, which is also the day of the tournament, Johnny gives the lesson of no mercy to his students and Miguel takes to heart and uses it to fuel his rage and blow through the competition in the tournament when eventually he faces Robbie in the final. The score is tied 2-2 and Miguel takes advantage of Robbie's injured shoulder, leading to his lackluster victory to be not as sweet because of him cheating to win. As Season 2 starts off, it starts with Miguel and Hawk getting punished for their actions in the tournament. At first, Miguel questions this punishment but trusts Johnny and turns over a new leaf. And when Miguel questions Johnny for punishing them, Johnny explains that he wasn't taught the difference between mercy and honor and he paid the price for it. He also wants Miguel to be a better man than he ever was. While this is all happening, Miguel attempts numerous times to reconnect with Samantha but decides to move on when he meets and later forms a new relationship with new student Tori Nichols who persuades him to go all in with her which will also show Samantha what she's missing out on. Miguel will go on to constantly show his allegiance to Johnny when Kreese tries to bring back No Mercy of Cobra Kai after Johnny changed the ways of the dojo itself. But Kreese ends up convincing Miguel that it's Johnny who's doing the wrong thing, not him. 
This causes Miguel to show no mercy during Coyote Creek training, which leads to Johnny banning Crease from the dojo. But after Crease is gone, Miguel goes right back to sticking by Johnny's teachings. Miguel also shows his honesty by returning the Medal of Honor to Robbie and apologizes for it being taken in the first place. At Moon's party, Miguel makes the mistake of kissing Sam while she's drunk, as Sam is conflicted about her feelings after Aisha told her about Miguel's honesty of returning the medal and Robbie lying about it. And Tori does see them kissing at a distance, which sparks the events of the all-out brawl that would take place next day at the high school. And Miguel shows how chivalrous he can be by standing up for his friends when Robbie is kicking the other Cobra Kais, even though he's trying to de-escalate the situation, which leads to them going all out against each other. The fight starts to conclude when Miguel gets Robbie in a lock that could separate his arm from his shoulder, but then remembers Johnny's lesson about mercy and honor, and then apologizes to Robbie. But fueled by his rage and anger, Robbie loses control and kicks Miguel off the balcony, nearly killing him and putting him into a coma. Season 3 opens up two weeks after the high school fight, where Miguel wakes up from his coma, and the first thing he says was asking where his sensei was. And at long last, Johnny can finally see Miguel now that he's awoken. But unfortunately, Johnny learns from Miguel that he might not be able to ever walk again, and then proceeds to get emotional when asking why this happened to him. He then starts yelling at Johnny, telling him to get out of the hospital. Over the course of the next few days, Miguel is visited by many friends, including Sam and Hawk. He also proceeds to get the necessary surgery he needs if he ever wants the chance of walking again. And once the surgery is complete, Johnny vows to help Miguel in his path of recovery with a variety of different unorthodox tactics that didn't seem to do much good. It's when the two of them visit a D. Snyder concert that Miguel learns that he has regained the ability to tap his foot to the beat of music again. As Johnny's unorthodox method of rehabbing continue, Johnny and Miguel get into a heated argument where the roles of teacher and student are reversed and Miguel is the one giving Johnny advice and tough love. This gave Miguel the strength and ability to walk again on his own and soon returns to school. Miguel would then go on to train in Johnny's newly created dojo, Eagle Fang Karate, but would soon find out that the All-Valley Tournament has been cancelled and that there's a community hearing coming up that they can appeal to. At the hearing, things aren't looking too good until Miguel shows up and gives a remarkable speech about how karate has changed his life and saved him, thanks to his sensei. And now that Miguel is back at school and after what they did at the hearing, Miguel and Sam decide to rekindle their relationship. And at the Miyagi-Do Dojo that night after the hearing, Sam and Miguel are celebrating by the reinstatement of the All-Valley, when they decide to start sparring which ends up in them kissing, which is all seen by Robbie. Similar to the events of the Season 1 beach party, the roles are reversed, and this time, it's Robbie striking first at Miguel. And this time, Sam steps in to defend Miguel, and Robbie leaves in disgust. Miguel would go on to formally meet Daniel, where he learns his side of the story, and a lot of past misunderstandings get cleared up. And then Sam forms a plan of merging Eagle Fang and Miyagi-Do that Miguel agrees to, to ultimately take down Cobra Kai at her house that night. Things started off a bit rocky between the two dojos, but ended up in both of the dojos agreeing to fight the bigger evil of Cobra Kai. But right as they were about to discuss a plan and specifics, they get interrupted by the Cobra Kai students that turns into an all-out brawl in the LaRusso household. And Miguel does struggle a bit from his injury after taking a beating from his former bully of Kyler, but eventually successfully perseveres and performs the drum technique to overcome Kyler as he sees Hawk and Dimitri teaming up. Miguel would then go on to train in Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang's combined dojos and gear up for the All-Valley in Season 4. This is of course super important because whoever loses must leave the valley and shut down their dojo forever. The character traits of Miguel Diaz is the type of character that many can relate to and aspire to be like. He's a generous and kind kid with a heart of gold who works for everything he has. He sticks up for his friends and family when he has to and has never shown the traits of a bully until Kreese tried getting in his head. But the loyalty of Miguel is unmatched, especially when it comes to his sensei and whenever a difficult challenge faces him. He's a prime example that shows that hard work and determination can overcome anything. There are many aspects that can determine Miguel as this generation's Karate Kid. But in my eyes, the most important aspect is his similarities with the original Karate Kid, Daniel LaRusso. And when we first meet both characters, they are the new kids in town, who go on to get bullied by a bunch of popular jocks, who then get saved by older men who know karate. They both convince the men in their lives to train them. They then develop confidence, strength, they both fall in love, and compete in the tournament that they win. They also both grew up in poverty, have single mothers, and no fathers present in their lives. They both show an unprecedented loyalty to their senseis in every situation. The list goes on, but I think I've made my point. My final thoughts are that there is no question or coincidence that the events in Miguel's life closely mirrored the events of Daniel LaRusso's. All of these things have happened for a reason. As close as Miguel is to Johnny, I would still say that Miguel would have a more personal connection to Daniel when talking about experiences and martial arts journeys. Miguel's character is far from over, and we still have a handful of seasons to go in the Cobra Kai series, but I'm excited to see where the writers go with him as he is this generation's Karate Kid. With that being said guys, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to let me know down below in the comments section 
your thoughts on this Miguel Diaz character analysis. You know what to do next. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to stay updated on Cobra Kai and Karate Kid content. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.